Hello everyone and welcome to a new video where we're going to be discussing the Safari Animal Pack. This pack would be not necessarily the Animal Pack version of Africa Pack because that's pretty much what Arid Animal Pack was, but more of a DLC to cover a, a variety of environments from around the world that you would find on Safari. So without further ado, let's get into it. So kicking off with the animals, we have the Hamadryas baboon, a species from around the Red Sea, notable with its bright red face and the silver fur that adorns the males. They also have huge canines, much like the rest of their family, and are one of the most requested primates in the game, found in a variety of different zoos, and are the flagship of this pack. And we do have some alternatives, so let's see where we go. A possible contender for the flagship spot is the Secretary Bird, one of the most requested birds in the game, if not the most requested, as of the updated 2024 Essential Habitat Animals wishlist by Susie Sky over on the Frontier Forums. I do recommend you go check it out. But this animal itself is a very cool bird, a member of the raptor family with long legs used, that it uses to kill snakes through a stomping mechanism. They are endangered with habitat loss and destruction affecting their population but they are also a fairly rare sight in zoos like i've never seen one but i would really love to and i know the in the us there's a good few zoos that have them and this animal is actually a common sight on safaris so this makes it a perfect addition to this pack the shoebill is a large wading bird from the wetlands of africa quite rare um but not endangered but this animal is known for its death stare that it will possess when it looks at you. But they are a largely grey bird with a bright beak on occasion. And yeah, they're a very cool bird. One of the most requested in the game again. And even though they're often called the shoebill stork, they're not actually a stork at all. But in their own group, more commonly related to the hammercock, which is another smaller bird of a similar appearance. One of the antelope of this pack is the Gerenook, a species known for its long neck and habit of standing back on its hind legs to reach into taller trees. This animal is somewhat like a gazelle and would probably utilize the Dharma gazelle rig, but given a new browsing animation, that would be really cool to see. Another animal that's made, made possible by recent additions as of last year is the honey badger, probably utilizing the wolverine rig as both animals behave in very similar ways. A honey badger is dubbed the toughest animal in the world, being, for its size, one of the most aggressive towards larger animals such as lions. This animal is iconic with its black and white coloration and would be a stellar addition to the game. Another antelope is the black buck from the Indian plains with males adorned with a black and white coloration and large spiral horns with the females lacking the horns and the black coloration. They're a very cool antelope, one of the most requested in the game nowadays and would be a great addition to the Indian roster, adding a bit of diversity. Another animal from outside of Africa is the Patagonian Mara or Patagonian Cavi. This animal is from the Patagonian steppe of South America and is a rodent, though they may look like rabbits and somewhat like a deer in some cases. They are, in fact, a rodent related to capybaras and agoutis. This animal would be a great addition to spice up the South American roster that currently lacks and would be a very diverse addition to a pack such as this. Moving on to the alternatives, we have the olive baboon, a very notable species of baboon from Africa that does have a representation in captivity, but somewhat less than the Hamadryas baboon. The Greater Kudu is another large antelope that could potentially make it into this pack. Adorned with huge spiraling horns and a stocky build, this animal would be great to see in the game as it is a very magnificent antelope. On the smaller side of antelope, we have the Kirk's Dick Dick, a tiny little antelope from the scrublands of Africa with a trunk-like nose not really seen on many other antelope and small dagger-like horns. This animal would be great to diversify the undulate roster as we don't really have too many undulates that are absolutely tiny. So it would be, it would be an interesting addition nonetheless. 
For a carnival pick, we have the African leopard, a member of Africa's big five on safaris. And this animal is one of the most iconic animals of Africa. Not endangered, but still a rare sight given their unparalleled camouflage. These animals are very hard to find, but also hard to find despite their commonality in Africa in zoos. Many African leopards in zoos are either not pure or just non-existent as they have often been crossbred with Asian subspecies. Another cat would be the serval, similar in appearance to the caracal with large ears, a small head, but having beautiful spots and stripes. They are, they are a pretty small cat, but are nonetheless a great leaper, able to catch birds mid-air much like their cousin the caracal. They would be a nice addition as they are pretty common in zoos and even as a household pet in, in the States. But this animal would be nonetheless a fine addition. Another iconic animal is the giraffe. Now we do have the reticulated giraffe in the game, but this is the Maasai giraffe, the largest of the giraffe species with mud cracked patterns adorning its flanks. This animal is pretty common in zoos alongside the reticulated and Rothschild giraffes. And Rothschild would be a, another great alternative for this option, but many American players would certainly appreciate this addition as they are pretty common in American zoos to my knowledge. The game currently lacks another crocodile. Now we have crocodilians, but we only have the saltwater crocodile representing the crocodiles. The Nile crocodile is the largest reptile in Africa, and we, since we don't have a crocodilian from Africa currently, the Nile crocodile would be the perfect spot. And these animals are found in a whole variety of environments in Africa, from the jungle wetlands and various other drier rivers around Africa. They're a very adaptable species and a very prolific carnivore. Impala are another antelope known from Africa and one of the most common sites on a safari. Uh, a favorite food source of many animals like African wild dogs, leopards, and cheetahs. But these animals are also pretty common in zoos, seen every now and again. And I would love to see the Impala added to the game. Giant Eland are one of the largest antelope in the world, being a very large animal with huge spiraling horns and a large dewlap on their neck. They have a very, I would like to say, very specific appearance that isn't really shared with other antelope. The only other antelope that comes close is the common Eland, an animal that is somewhat more common in captivity, but the giant Eland, holding the record as the largest antelope in the world, would certainly make a great addition. The Grevy zebra is an endangered species of zebra from the Horn of Africa, and unlike the plain zebra, their stripes actually don't go under their belly. They also have larger ears and a brown muzzle, and much thinner stripes too. These animals would be a great addition as they are also the largest of the zebras. I think that's a, somewhat of a trend here, <laughs> largest of, but these animals are pretty common in captivity, and I would love to see another zebra with the the, the new horse animations that the Chevalsky's horse and Somali wild ass do have. Another antelope that currently isn't represented in the game is the topi. Now these animals are similar in appearance to heart of beasts, of which we do not have in the game. So this would be another form of antelope that would be somewhat of a new appearance in the game as no antelope currently comes close to its appearance with those large horns compared to the pretty long head and the delicate body. But these animals would be a great addition as they do have a striking appearance. Our last habitat animal is the grey crown crane, a very requested animal and a brightly coloured one at that. These animals are also common on safaris and would be a great addition to the African bird roster. On to exhibit animals, I have been informed every now and again that the animal packs will have a normal exhibit animal and that does seem to be the case nowadays since the walkthrough exhibits were introduced. Although grasslands animal packs didn't keep to that tradition but eh, we'll see. But um, on the topic of exhibit animals we have the Jackson's chameleon also known as the Jackson's three-horned chameleon or as I like to call it the triceratops of our day. These animals are very iconic and since we don't have any chameleons, the Jackson's chameleon would certainly be a great addition. Another cool lizard is the Mozambique girdle lizard, 
with a orange underbelly and black top. There is great color counter shading here and would be a very striking addition to the exhibits. Perhaps more striking is the red-headed Rokogama, a very colorful lizard and probably one of the most colorful in the world. With its bright red head and blue coloration, it would add a new hint of rainbow coloration to the exhibits. When it comes to African snakes, none is more iconic than the black mamba, one of the most infamous snakes in all the world and one of the fastest too. With a very powerful venom, it would be a very cool addition. One of my personal favourite snakes is the Gaboon Viper, a species from the forests of Africa that blends in with the leaf litter. They are, I think, one of the largest vipers, if not having the largest fangs of any snake. With their horns on the, on the front of their snouts, they are a very striking addition, and I would love to see them in the game. Africa's largest snake is the African rock python. This would add a new niche of snakes that has not yet been covered. Now we have boas like the yellow anaconda and the boa constrictor, but we don't actually have any pythons. The African rock python would be able to fix that problem and would certainly be a colossal addition. It would probably need a much larger exhibit too, but it would be great nonetheless. Now, keeping with that idea of the grasslands animal pack having a walk to exhibit animal, I think the white fronted bee eater, the southern carmine bee eater, and the white throated bee eater would be great additions to the walkthrough exhibit. And since the grasslands animal pack had five, I thought I would add on the European bee eater and African green bee eater on the side, giving a great diversity of colours for these colourful birds in the walkthrough exhibits. Whether we would get walkthrough exhibit birds is still up up to interpretation, but um, I would like to think that we could get these bee eaters as they are probably the perfect addition. When it comes to the free update, there are a few plants from the safari regions of the world that would certainly be of a good addition and some that are just there. First up, we have the jackalberry tree, the knobthorn tree, the whistling thorn and the gum acacia. The Prince of Wales Feather, the Bird of Paradise Flower, which is very iconic, Pampas Grass is also a very notable species, and the River Red Gum. Now we're going to see a lot of eucalyptus trees as we don't really have a lot, and Australia is, has a very unique range. Just a, four others, the Alpine Ash, the Brittle Gum, the Shining Gum, and lastly, the Sal Tree of India, as we don't really have any trees that really highlight the Indian forests, and the sal tree is certainly a very common site on Indian safaris. Some other additions could include monitors climbing trees and being able to deep dive as well. Now the Asian water monitor can deep dive, but the Nile monitor cannot. So having both, having the opportunity to deep dive and climb, that would be great. Now this isn't either of those, this is actually a Bengal monitor, but it's the only picture I could find that had good enough quality. <laughs> Another behavior is animal herding, clustering, group sleeping, and pack mentality. Now, when you put a large amount of animals in, the, in an enclosure of the same species, they don't really stick together. They'll all go off and do their own thing, when in reality, these animals would probably hang very closely together. So animals like wild dogs, wildebeest, they would hang very closely with one another. When it comes to group sleeping, it's basically many animals in a pile. <laughs> So much like these meerkats that you can see on the left. Another major feature I'd love to see added to the game is horn, tusk, antler, and mane variation for a variety of animals. So the mane variation primarily applies to the lion, tusk variation to elephants, and horn variation to rhinos, antelope, and buffalo. You can see in the, this picture in the bottom right, these white rhinos all have a very different assortment of horns. And that would be a very cool feature to be reflected in the game. Something else on people's wish list would be scratching trees for every biome, and something I just added on of different sizes, so that even the largest animals would be able to get a good scratch on the trees in their enclosures. So, like this African bush elephant scratching on this acacia tree, and this particular giraffe 
scratching on this dead tree that has been placed in its enclosure. Another feature is coarse behavior being added to more animals. Animals like primates, lions, seals, wild dogs, elephants, hippos, and many, many more. I think it would just be so cool to be able to hear a lot more animals using this behavior, particularly the lions, that would be absolutely fantastic. Another major behavior is sentries. Now sentries exist in a variety of ways, particularly with meerkats, capybaras, prairie dogs, and lemurs. With sentry posts for meerkats, where they would find the highest point in the enclosure and stand up to give it a good look. And these other animals would probably adopt a similar behavior. With capybaras, they often find a high bank to be able to look out for potential threats like jaguars or caiman. With lemurs, they go up to a high tree to potentially look out for fooses. So it would be a great behavior and really add to the realism of these animals as they are often quite skittish in the wild. Some other pieces I would like to see would be rusted metal and perhaps even a rusted metal set to really get a very cool rustic vibe in your enclosure designs and just where your guests view the animals. Like this one at the African wild dog habitat at Taronga Western Plains Zoo. I think that'd be really cool. And a steel mesh set with every shape of every building set to make more interesting mesh enclosures would be very welcome indeed. All these pictures do also come from the Taronga zoos. And yeah, it, it's just very cool that mesh can be applied in so many different ways to a great diversity of levels. And I think it would be very cool to be able to reflect that in the plant zoo. Well, there you have it. That is the Safari Animal Pack and the corresponding update. So let me know what you think. Would you like to see this pack? Would you not like to see this pack? What do you think of the update? Leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like. And if you're feeling oh so generous, subscribe as we are edging closer to 1000. As for now, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.